Hello and welcome to Duck It. Today we will be deciding if this really is the ultimate duck boat. It is an Excel Catfish Pro 2472. It has a 200 Suzuki on the back and it is camo painted. One of the upgrades that I did and I will go into more details on all of those. It was the largest duck boat that I could find out of all the name brands. I was tired of having a little boat with multiple people, gear, decoys, grass. Tired of it being hard to shoot out of. I uh, wanted something big, wide, open for where we hunt. That would be great because it's more saltwater marsh. And so with it being 72, there's plenty of room in here. As you can see, there's two people plus walk-in space room on the inside plus storage. So plenty wide for what we need it for. I have not hunted with it yet. It is the off season. Been four times, been out on the water, freshwater and saltwater. So I do have enough to give a review on it so far. It has a lot of upgrades. I will probably do more videos in the future of each main piece at least, so I can go into more detail, but today just a broad overview. It has Diamond City axle trailer. Uh, no complaints about the trailer. Trailer is pretty much a trailer. It does have disc brakes on the front axle, which is nice. Uh, I have had two people with boats that have had disc brakes that use them in salt water. They both have said that it ends up going out after about a year or two. So actually I didn't choose these, but it was a standard feature on the 24 model just for the weight sake. So sure, whatever. The trolling motor at the front is a Minn Kota Tarova. It is not the self-deploy model. And I did that on purpose because if I'm using this mainly as a duck boat, I'm going to be up here on the front anyways, using it to hold me steady while I'm picking up decoys. So I'll be right here. Um, it wasn't worth the extra money in my mind. And by the way, if you do stick around to the end of the video, I will share exactly how much this boat did cost. So like I said, stick around. It has a 30 gallon gas tank and it is heat of summer. So yes, that was the gas venting there. Uh, I have had some problems with this so far. The few times I've put gas in it, I don't know with the sun, if you can see, there's a little vent port right there at the top. And when you put gas in, sometimes that can definitely get some gas that spills down into it. And therefore it does not vent properly and the gas does not go into the tank. Uh, you have to really let it settle. I've had to uh, quickly crank the motor just to get it to suck down. Uh, so not my favorite feature on that. I wish I could have done a little bit better, but still a 30 gallon gas tank. Uh, that's nice. It'll last you plenty of hunts. Uh, the paint job is the Optifade Marsh option. Again, out of the different options that they did have, we hunt in saltwater marsh. This was the closest thing, and I, I do like the detail of it. It looks pretty uh, sleek. The inside is like a rhino liner coating, so it's non-slick. Uh, that has actually been quite helpful so far when the boat has gotten wet. Uh, you can tell that, I mean, even during, I mean, complete rain, I haven't had it out in the winter yet, so I don't, can't say for sure about ice, but it is definitely not very slick uh, with waders, rubber boots. I'm sure we'll be fine, even if it's a little icy. From the outside here, I don't really talk about it so much. Let's get inside. So again, starting at the nose, working my way down. This boat does have plenty of storage. This is for the life jackets, or at least that's what I'm using it for. Most important thing on the boat, little girl's life vest. I believe I have seven life jackets in here, plus the, you know, flares and everything. Plenty of storage. I can fully fit my arm all the way back to there, up to my elbow. So, whatever you need to use it for, again, life vest made the most, most sense for me. One thing I definitely do not like about this, though, giving a fair review here, is that these are not dry storage. When it rains, the water goes down through this crack into here and definitely runs into this whole compartment, letting all these get pretty moldy or whatever you want to store in here. There is a vent, or not a vent, a uh, channel that does run this kind of V-shaped boat, right? So it does run up underneath platform all the way back to the drain plug 
I definitely wish they were gonna, you know, make these storage options. You'd think that they'd all be dry storage, but then I guess there'd be the problem with it being flush right here, but still you think that they could figure out a way here in 2023 to make that possible, but you do have for the nav lights, this nice little cap keeps it from getting ruined over time. Nice little extra feature. You can adjust or turn on the nav light, uh, adjust the trim, 12 volt charging at the front. Don't know how needed that is, but still nice to have, I guess. They did mount the motor from the dealer right here at the front. It has an anchor mode. I can get to that in a separate video, like I said, going in more detail, but it'll keep you GPS centered at the nose of the boat would have made more sense but from the dealer they or from the uh builder they did give the little platform here i did add the cleats myself plenty of platform space here i'm standing here plenty of room to walk very sturdy doesn't give doesn't bow the gas tank is right here so it does offset the weight a little bit better when you're trying to drive get up on plane it's very very smooth it doesn't doesn't lift up at all you're just always on plane there are three seat option decks for the seat here in the back. I will end up ordering an extra sheet, seat, I'm sure. But for right now, I just move it back and forth when needed. This acts as a good step down, very sturdy, very safe. This was an upgraded feature. Um, I believe this is the gun box. I'll get into detail about that. But I ordered a gun box. I wanted it to be on the side. But this is definitely a fishing pole storage box. So I believe they did mess up or they assumed that I wanted this as well. So this was the only place it could go, but it does actually work out. This is a dry storage. You just have the lip. Oh, that's the other complaint about these is that I wish they had a little bit of hydraulic or, or were able to stand up a little bit better on their own. The one in the back does the same. But it does have a lip right here. So when it closes, goes over top of that keeps it dry i plan on keeping my ammo my duck bag uh you know if there's any robo decoys all in this one and these you can lock all of them that's nice uh, if someone's really gonna come in here and steal life vests then so be it this is one of the two live wells i use this mainly as a duck hunting boat don't really plan on doing fishing with it i'll just use this for you know, storage of, you know, whatever else that actually can get wet because this is not a dry storage box. This one definitely, when it rains, there's water up in here. There's water in the life vest compartment. Definitely would have changed that. I added this separately from Academy. It's already faded color, which bothers me, but I might go ahead and just paint it. Two very comfortable seats. I'm very actually happy with that. I could definitely sit here for hours on a hunt. They do swivel. Let's do that so you can sit here. I did choose a side console model on purpose because I want to be able to shoot off this side. And so sitting here would be for sure one of the seats that we'd use. The rod storage box. Again, didn't actually choose it, but not complaining about it either. It is listed as being able to store four rods. I don't know if you can see, there are little rod tip spots for them. I've fit six or seven in here before. Uh, I would plan on using this, though, as the gun storage box because it is dry and the gun shotguns could fit in there for sure. Quite long. Don't know the dimensions. I'd say six feet maybe, but then it continues back to the second door hatch whatever you want to call it again they can all lock so sure maybe these would be pretty beneficial for if you have some expensive rods your guns second most important thing on the boat little girl's fishing pole gotta teach him young i don't know how many fish she's caught with this one but so a little bit more storage nice and that is definitely one of the positives of this boat is plenty of storage that is not in the way. Um, everything can be very neatly kept out here to where you have plenty of walking room. Again, I'm standing right here. Plenty of space. You could have two, three people just right here in this section. 
won't feel too crowded. Let's get to the good stuff, the console. Nice clean gauges. They even have the fancy carbon fiber look in design. Uh, one of the main complaints, which the boat is under warranty, and I'm going to get it fixed here very shortly, is that the speedometer has not worked all four times I've had this boat out. I uh, don't know why, if it's wiring issue, hopefully something very small. I did call them up. They are going to look at it free charge. They did not complain about that. So uh, good customer service on their side of things, at least. RPMs, uh, I believe the max I've had it up to, I think it gets to 5,500 top speed. 45 miles an hour with you know one or two people on board minimal gear uh, that it was at the intercoastal waterway pretty smooth water that day and winds so 45 miles an hour with the suzuki 200 on the back uh, fortunately I haven't had these go off yet gas tank i mean there's gas in it, it turns on when you turn on the ignition bilge nav lights aerator uh the horn Charging ports for your phone, whatnot. Jack plate. Have a hydraulic jack plate. We'll get that on the back. This is for, can't see it today because it's broad daylight, but I did get some inside lights. I believe there's only two, which if I'd known that, I would have definitely uh, opted against that and done it myself. I still might put more. We'll have it out during a hunt in the morning, see how lit up it is and if we need any more. To get the power pole on the back, which is pretty useful. It has the remote as well. Again, might go into a separate video on this in the future, but right here, right now. Just push the button. It bends out and down. When you're in the water, it hits and then it digs. Pretty useful so far. It is pretty flexible. It's fiberglass, so it can bend and bow. But Parking up against the bank when you're hunting, I thought that'd be a nice quick option instead of throwing out an anchor. anchor worrying about a spud pole, just have this. Everyone that's had it says that they love it. The Minn Kota on the front does have this remote, which is nice. You can hit the anchor mode, which GPS keeps it locked in. So when you're picking up decoys, it'll just be holding you still no matter which way the wind's blowing, no matter which way the current's going. You can be right there grabbing the decoys nearby and then slowly creep it forward, turn it, turn it. So if you are by yourself, make it much easier. You have a Garmin on here again, go into a separate video one day, uh, but it can map out your plot if you have shallow channels that you have to get through, or if you have your favorite spot, you can drop the breadcrumbs and you always get to that. So. Pretty useful there. It's only a cup holder that came on the boat. I had to install the fire extinguisher. Uh, had to install the third most important thing on the boat, Rex Unlimited. Here's our specs. Online, it definitely says 900 pounds. Uh, I mean, give or take, you know, these things are always a little conservative, I'd say, but it is rated for 225. I only have 200 on the back. I thought that that would be plenty, and sure enough, having it out, it is. Uh, it's plenty fast. Gets up on plane. I mean, again, instantly. It, it's never off of plane. I uh, have not had it out with four people in gear, but uh, I've had it out with six people in general, and it gets up fine, goes fine, top speed side of things. Definitely happy with the 200. I don't think I need any more. Good bench seat if you need it. Uh, I do have a separate cooler which I purchased that we'll use as one of the bench seats for when we're shooting off of this side. But I don't have it in here for the sake of this boat, this video. I did go ahead and get two aftermarket cup holders because again, there's only one that came included. I plan on having multiple people in here. So I thought it'd be nice for them. And yes, it comes with shotgun shell holders. I don't know how much we're ever going to use that. But this has a gunnel mounting rail. Uh, I'm kind of mixed on this. I don't know how important it actually is, but it's, it's pretty nice. I didn't have to do any drilling. Just get the bolts. You can slide it. You can adjust it. So that is nice. If I mean, I just put them here for now and it's worked. But if we have the hunting blind on here shortly and we need that to be in a different spot, we definitely could without having to drill 100 holes in this boat. Again, it 
should be my boat for life. So uh, longevity side of things, that would be, I guess, a nice feature. This was one of the cool selling features of the boat. It is a 66 gallon five well. And again, doesn't, doesn't stay very well on its own. Definitely a complaint. It is aerated. It does have a divider right there. I just use it as storage because, again, I'm not really doing a lot of fishing on this. It does get water inside of it. This boat, I mean, it hasn't rained for at least a week, I'd say. Haven't had it out in a few weeks at least. And yes, there's still water trapped in here. So I don't like that. Definitely wish they would have done more of a dry storage, but I mean, a live well, I guess I get it. But, but still, definitely something that longevity side of things, I don't want to always have to be cleaning this thing out. And again, you can lock your fish in here so no one steals your catch. Swivel seat. I have to take off the pole for it to ride. Comes out. Again, you can move it to the front. In the back, it's one of my other main complaints. So all of the water from all of those different storage boxes, which are not dry boxes, all the water comes back to here. Where the batteries, electronics, all that is, and there's a drain plug. So, and this itself is not a dry storage. All the water goes right down into here. It's all up in that. Don't like that, definitely wish they would have changed it, of course, as I keep saying. Probably my biggest complaint about the boat. You know, storage should be dry. I feel like you should just expect that to be the case. Uh, it does have the water separator that came standard. I have three batteries, two for the trolling motor, one cranking. It does have the three charger port, which this is a pretty cool unexpected feature, but right here, you just have a plug. You can just get to the house, plug it in, it's charging. Now it does charge from the outboard itself when it is running, but uh, so you can go ahead and do that if it's been a while since you've had it out. Added the cleats on the back, added these guide poles on the back. Really easy, convenient to step down off of this. This is very sturdy. Again, power pole. It has the upgraded plastic bunks. Again, keeping this boat for life. I'd like to have it last. Take off this. Ransom saver came with the boat. Got your button. Now this is a 200 Suzuki. I am six feet tall. It is taller than me. Big, it's really quiet. I really like that. Not trying to make a ton of noise at three in the morning when you're getting to your spot. It has the Atlas jack plate, so you can raise it up, lower it down. Uh, the dealership and online say that it only needs 11 inches of draft. We will find out because we hunted some shallow spots. It does have this oversplash, nice little feature. Uh, I had ordered a taller transom, but with COVID and metal shortage and everything, it was definitely going to be delayed by an unknown amount of time before that could happen, before we could find a motor that's taller to match. So this is the standard, I believe it's a 20 or 21 inch transom. Had it out on the ocean, uh, very rarely does it oversplash. And when it does, it, I mean, it gets into here and it drains right out. So. So no complaints there. Would have been an upgrade, but turns out I'd say I don't really need it after all. Again, put on the guide poles because trying to back this thing in the water, definitely at nighttime, I feel like that'd be handy. Put on the reflectors myself, just more illumination. I've had it out four times. Overall, if I were to rank it as just perfect duck boat out of 10, I would give it, 
an eight. Not perfect, again, gas tank had some issues with the design, I'd say. The storage boxes are not all dry storage boxes. Some things don't work on it, like the speedometer. The lights feel like got gypped a little bit. Otherwise, though, I mean, definitely still a great boat for the money, which, as I promised, I will share exactly how much the sticker price was on this boat. It ended up being right under $60,000, which, put down your pitchforks, I can explain. That was with all the different upgrades. That was during COVID with the metal price increase. I wanted to lock it in because prices kept going up on it, and I believe that prices would not ever end up going back to normal, quote. So that was the sticker price, but that was with the longer motor, longer shaft in the back with the upgraded transom because I did not end up getting that. That knocked down, I think, about $2,000. The boat was later than they'd promised. That knocked down another $2,000 from the dealer. This console, the standard, and if you look online, it is actually supposed to be about right there in the seat even further back. For whatever reason, they built it up here. Now, I actually am happy with it after driving it because this truly is about the middle of the boat. It would feel, I think, definitely odd trying to sit back there and drive it. But, you know, closed mouth never gets fed. I did ask about it, complained about it a little bit. It wasn't what I wanted. This is supposed to be my ultimate forever boat. They knocked off, I believe, another, yes, another $4,000 from that problem alone. And that dropped the price to right at $50,000, which for a 200 Suzuki on the back, trailer upgrades, big boat, biggest one that I could find, trolling motor, power pole, hydraulic jack plate. I feel like that was a good deal compared to some of these other boats online. But with that being said, my old boat was about a $300 boat. So definitely more of the upgrade here. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment on the video. I'm gonna, like I said, release a lot more on each different main product in detail. Have your questions ready, but please go ahead and click the subscribe button. That would be the biggest way to help this channel. Like I said, I plan on releasing a lot more videos, not just of the boat, but of other gear, products, kayaks, you name it. So click like if you got anything valuable out of this video and you tell me if your boat is more ultimate than mine. So catch you next time.